Zion Lutheran Church of Wilton, Iowa, invite you to worship with them. We are your neighbors and friends in Christ. Is risen. He is risen what a joy it is to know that our Lord loved us and died for us and rose again to give us life eternal with him. We're using the order of Matins this morning on page 219 and uh, there is a printout prayer in your bulletin. We will not use the prayer this Sunday but the backside is, is information and we'll have a letter read to you uh, after the service today concerning that, we'll use the prayer next Sunday as we receive that offering. So let us begin our worship with the singing of our opening hymn.
Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. The Lord has gathered us in the true faith. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see? from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. To cut off the memory of them from the earth. The Lord is near to the broken hearted and saves the crushed in spirit. He keeps all his 
his bones. No one of them is broken. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. The Old Testament reading for this, the second Sunday after Trinity, is from Proverbs chapter 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her beast. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her young women to call from the highest places in the town. Whoever is simple, 
Let him turn in here. To him who lacks sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and live and walk in the way of insight. Whoever corrects a scoffer gets himself abuse. And he who reproves a wicked man incurs injury. Do not reprove a scoffer or he will hate you. Reprove a wise man and he will love you. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be, be still wiser. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Ephesians chapter 2. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in his flesh the dividing wall of hostility by abolishing the law of commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new man in place of the two, so making peace and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God by the Spirit. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In the Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. When one of those who reclined at table with Jesus heard these things, he said to him, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, a man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is now ready. But they, all alike, began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported these things to his master. Then the master of the house became angry and said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in the poor and crippled and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges, and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. We'll have our children come forward for the children's message.
kids kind of look tired. They've been at Bible school all week. <laughs> Did good. Had a fun time. I'm going to ask you some questions. Why do you come to church? To learn about God. Okay. And what is your attitude? Why do you come and worship and praise God? Is it because you have to? Or is it because you want to come? Hopefully that you want to come. Good. You know, certainly God tells us in his Ten Commandments, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. And that certainly means that we should go to church and Sunday school and Bible class, doesn't it? But our God isn't first and foremost a God of you shall and you shall not. He's a God who draws himself to us, to him. He says, come. He's the God who desires us to want to come to church, come to him, want to worship and praise him. Now, because we haven't obeyed him at all, because we don't do the things he says you should do, and we, don't do, and we do the things that he tells us we shouldn't do a lot of times. So we, on our own, can't come to him because we have sinned. And you know, we have that sin already when we're born, don't we? Yeah. But our God loves us, and he wants us to come to him. And so he made it possible for us to be able to come to him. By his coming, he came to us as a babe of Bethlehem, remember? He came to us to live the perfect life we couldn't. He came to us to take all our sins on himself and take them with him to the cross and die for them to take them all away. And then on the third day, he rose again from the dead to give us life so that we can live with him forever, right? You see, God draws us to himself by the things he has done for us. And through his word and sacraments, through baptism and his holy supper, he invites us to come to him, doesn't he? So now, we who are his baptized children, I hope and pray, want to come and be with him and to hear him. And he's promised to be here at his church where you can, I, I can hear his word, receive all of his gifts. He tells us, come. And so we want to come in order to worship and praise him, in order to hear his word, in order to sing his praises because he is the one who lived, died, and rose again for us. That makes it important, doesn't it? Okay, go back to your mom and your dad. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. To the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
In our gospel reading today, the master of the feast said, Come, for everything is now ready. And there he stood with his arms outstretched, open to the people he had prepared for centuries to receive it. Come, he said, to his chosen special people. But they didn't come. They gave excuses. Land, five yoke of oxen, a wife. Flimsy excuses. But the real scandal in this parable was what was behind the excuses. Rejection of the one throwing the banquet. It was personal. And oh, with what love God had prepared his people, the Jews. He gave them the promised land as a foretaste of paradise that he would bring to them. He gave them the temple sacrifice of oxen and other animals to prepare them for the all-availing sacrifice of his son on the cross. He gave them the gift of marriage a picture of the relationship between the Messiah and his people. But when he came, these privileged people used the gifts against him, rejected him. They made excuses. And God takes rejection personally. They would never taste of his heavenly banquet. Now imagine that. All that privilege, all that favor, all the centuries of preparation, this is what they were waiting for. The Messiah in the flesh. The kingdom of God had arrived. The most important thing in the world had happened. The banquet was now ready. God's arms were stretched out and open and ready to rejoice with his people. And they didn't come. Excuses are a dime a dozen. Maybe you've gotten away with a few yourself. But people aren't fooled. And neither is God. You see, he sees what's behind them. Your excuse might be that you don't have time to read and study God's word and pray because of your busy schedule. But God sees it as rejection of him. Your excuse for not coming to church every Sunday is that, well, you know, once in a while I need to sleep in. But God sees it as rejection of him. Your excuse for not giving sacrificially into the offering plate is because, well, you just don't have the money. But God sees it as a rejection of him. Because you do have it for all kinds of other frivolous spending. And God doesn't take rejection well. Personal insults means personal exclusion from the kingdom. For as the master of peace said, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. So we need to repent. We need to stop living like a Lutheran version of those indifferent, secure, excuse-making, privileged Jews. Confess any excuses for despising the things of God. Confess them for what they are. Personal rejection of a God 
who personally loves us. We need to repent. We need to start living like that other group in the parable who considered an invitation to God's heavenly, king, uh, heavenly banquet as the most unexpected, wonderful, and greatest thing in the world. Confess yourself to be poor and unable to pay the debt that you owe God. Confess yourself to be crippled, unable to walk the way the law expects you to. Confess yourself to be blind, unable to grasp the depth of your sin and the heights to which God's mercy has brought you. Rejoice and believe in God's mercy. For though rejection of God is indeed personal, God had a personal plan to deal with it. He would send his servant Jesus to do much like that willing and tireless servant in the parable. He would send him first to the privileged Jews, and then to the poor and the crippled and the blind and the lame, and then to the Gentiles and the highways and hedges. But for Jesus, there would be even more. There would be Jerusalem, where he would willingly and tirelessly deal with all of man's personal rejection by taking it to the cross and triumphing over it. Jesus is God's personal answer to your personal indifference to the things of God. Jesus is God's yes, which overcomes your no. He's God's acceptance of you, which overcomes your rejection of him. He's God's personal answer to deal with all the flimsy excuses for not delighting and rejoicing in that the kingdom of God has come among you. Come, God said to his people, the Jews, but no one came to fill up his house. But in the fullness of time, he again said, Come. More accurately, come out. And the Son of God, Jesus, the Savior, proceeded from the bosom of the Father, left his heavenly home, ready and eager to do the dirty work of inviting sinners and associating with outcasts, with those who don't have it all together, with those who don't have the strength to be holy enough. He did the dirty work of taking on man's flesh in order to touch man in his uncleanness. To take all of his insults and the personal rejection and bear them all to death on the cross to personally associate with poor people like Lazarus, to forgive the paralytic on the mat, to touch sinners like blind Bartimaeus, to bring healing to the leper, to the man with the withered hand, to the woman with the 12 year flow of blood, to associate with the Canaanite woman who considers herself a dog, to associate with you, to gather you. For he has chosen you to fill his house and to rejoice with him. For God the Father, the master of the heavenly banquet, could have made a lot of excuses for leaving you out of his heavenly banquet. But he didn't. 
for it's God's good pleasure to give the kingdom to those who think they are unworthy. He could have made excuses, but instead, he made personal provision for you to get in and stay in. In your baptism, you got more than just a piece of land. You came into all of God's paradise. And in, hope, in absolution, you received the benefit, not of the sacrifice of oxen, but of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. He forgives all your sins. And in his holy supper, his banquet, you receive his very body and blood in which he nourishes you and declares you to be not just an old spouse, but the zealous object of his love, his beautiful bride, his church. So rejoice. You know, God obsesses that his heavenly house be filled. And you are the personal object of his obsession to be merciful. You who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Come. For everything is now ready. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us arise and sing our canticle.
we give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. since you never fail to help and govern those whom you nurture in your steadfast fear and love, work in us a perpetual fear and love of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for bringing us who were once far off near to you by the blood of Christ. Remove from us all pride and vanity and give to us humble hearts that recognize that you have made us members of your household solely by grace. Send your servants throughout the world to graciously invite all sinners to come to your great banquet. Continue to raise up faithful men for this task and fill your banquet hall with sinners redeemed by Christ the crucified. We pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal Father, bless the churches of the Augsburg Confession throughout the world with continued zeal for the truth of your word. Keep them steadfast in the faith and devoted to the proclamation of the pure gospel and the administration of the sacraments according to Christ's institution. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Loving Father, have mercy on all who are suffering and desire your aid at the present time, especially Keith, Janet, Roberta, Carrie Ann, Shirley, Matthew, John, Pastor Arndt, Velma, Andy, Hazel, Ed, and Mary. According to your gracious will, Heal their infirmities and give them strength to bear all their crosses in Christian patience. We remember all who rest in your nearer presence, especially those in our families who have gone before us in the faith. Prepare us every day to fall asleep in the wounds of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, that we may rise with them in glory at our Savior's return to judge the living and the dead. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run any, into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
welcome to all of you. Uh, as I mentioned before, our Bible school ended this week. Uh, we had about 62 children that came to our Bible school. We had a number of volunteers, and we thank all of, all of you for that. Uh, from preparing to bringing snacks to serving at the hot dog hallelujah, uh, helping in the classrooms and the crafts. That all made the work much easier. And we thank our directors for uh, taking that on. Thank you, Beth, and Heidi, too. Um, we collected an offering for uh, Spanish hymnals for our mission congregations in Spain. Uh, Pastor Warren is our contact for Iowa District East. And uh, we were able to purchase uh, 46 hymnals for them uh, at $10 a piece. We, we received $460.16 in offerings from our children this week. We praise God for that. The Board of Ed is gearing up for their uh, pie booth on uh, Founders Day, so be sure and note the, the sign-up sheets when they come out. Uh, and then uh, I'd like for uh, our chairman of our congregation, Bruce Jipp, to come up and, and read a letter from uh, the re-elected president of our Missouri Synod, Reverend Matthew Harrison, concerning the uh, national uh, offering that is collected each year. You want to use that or you want to mind it? Good morning, everyone. Um, and if you haven't already gotten ahead of me and read the letter, you can follow through on the, what's in your bulletin. That happens every three years. So having said that, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, St. Paul reminds us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. When the Thessalonians heard Paul's urging to rejoice, pray, and give thanks, they did so. This July, so will we, when elected delegates and visitors from around the world gather in Tampa for the 67th regular convention of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. And through that rejoicing, praying, and giving thanks, we will hear, bear witness to God's love in Christ. Will you also prepare joyfully to take on this work with us? Here's what you can do. First, please pray. Pray for me as your synod president, for my brothers on the council of presidents, for my fellow pastors, deaconesses, DCEs, church musicians, teachers, and all church workers, our congregations and schools, our seminaries and universities, and all our partners in ministry throughout the world. Pray that we may all be strengthened on our joyful confession of Christ and, re and renewed winsome witnesses to his love. Pray especially for the delegates and guests who will gather in Tampa, asking God for the gift of his spirit that we may listen to each other in humility, speak in love, and plan together for ways to meet the challenges before us in faithfulness to God's word. Second, join with all of the LCMS as we participate together in the 2019 through 21 LCMS National Offering. This special collection of monetary gifts sets the tone for our next triennium under the theme, Joy to the World, preparing hearts for prayerful rejoicing, gratitude, and bold action. Any gifts received go directly to the mission of the LCMS to make known the good news of Jesus Christ, joy incarnate to the world. We know that the gospel of Jesus Christ brings great joy to God's people through the forgiveness of sins and the certain hope of eternal life. Your church's gifts will help support work that reflects the Christ-centered joy of Lutheran Christians everywhere and share that joy across boundaries among those who have not yet heard the powerful message of his salvation. Having joyfully received the gospel through word and sacrament, Let's come together for the 2019 through 21 national offering and watch how it emboldens the work that God has given his people to do and brings true and lasting joy to the world that all might rejoice and give thanks to God for every good gift. Signed, Reverend Dr. Matthew C. Harrison. Thank you.
Next Sunday, there will be a plate in the, in the entryway uh, to receive that offering, uh, if you have any. Uh, so, and then we, during the service, we will... Contents of views expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this cable company or its commission.